Hi, so uh, this is uh, Lynn Mason, uh, frontline trauma yeah. lead from Liverpool University Hospitals uh, NHS Foundation Trust. Also work in the University of Liverpool. So, as a uh, to accompany the webinar that we have recently performed for AuthorHub, I want to speak through the approaches as it's quite uh, important to some of the work that we've done on this. I'd like to also uh, include my colleague, uh, Annie Malloy, who has been uh, accompanied me with this uh, throughout. So the Liverpool algorithm, as explained on the AuthHub webinar, uh, as for a type 1 fracture syndromic fixation, a type 2A fracture, an open reduction to a fixation through a postlateral approach, type 2B fracture, an open reduction to a fixation, with a postural medial fragment done first through a postural medial or postural lateral plus a postural a medial postural medial. And type three is no production into a fixation through a postural medial incision. So there's three approaches that we're going to discuss postural lateral, postural medial, and medial postural medial. So I have discussed this in one of the other webinars, but the uh, publication earlier this year in the foot where we looked at the different approaches and the different fracture patterns and where it was the most appropriate to uh, use. The postulateral is used in 74% of cases, although um, almost 20% required extra medial postural medial incision to get to a type 2B fracture. The type 3 is much, easily, uh, much more easily ac accessed through the postural medial incision. This is a clock face approach to uh, identify this. I see ignoring type 1, which is usually since modic fixation, but type 2A is easier through a postal lateral. Type 2B is usually through a uh, either postal medial or a postal lateral plus a medial postal medial, and a type 3 uh, straight down the center uh, through the postal medial incision. And this is a diagrammatic uh, representation. As you can see, postural lateral approach can get to these fragments. And you know, postural medial, uh, you can get to uh, the uh, these two fragments, but can't get to the fibula. And suddenly you can get to a, a type three very easily. The medial postural medial gives you very good access to the medial aspect, but doesn't allow you to access the fibula or the postural lateral. So how do we do it? So the postural lateral approach to start with. And first of all, let's talk about positioning. And it's because I was inverted. So you have to see the back of the uh, ankle. Um, the, you can either do this through the prone position. I call this a stotty from my uh, anaesthetist, where we have uh, two uh, glide sheets, one on top of Montreal mattress, one below. And the reason for this is you can position the head uh, or using the top glide sheet uh, to allow um, the anaesthetist uh, to uh, get access and when you're happy you can use all um, move everything on the bottom glide sheet to get the foot to hang over the edge of the bed so the table i use so there's the ability to drop the other leg out of the way so that you get uh, um, your x-ray uh, from underneath and it's much easier access the semi-prone or recovery position uh, type 2b where you have a, uh, the foot in, in prone, uh, but the upper, uh, upper aspect of the body is in a lateral position. Um, I'm using this much more commonly now in my practice, uh, especially if there's any uh, difficulty or any uh, comminution on the medial side, it's much easier to access from this. The other leg is bent up of the way so you can get your lateral. So the approach, the postulateral, uh, is through the three pops, is the way I teach it. Uh, the skin is excluded from these three pops, but we'll discuss this further. So the incision markup, the halfway between the fibula and ten Achilles, the sural nerve runs from seven centimeters uh, from this transmalleolar line. We're just drawing the transmalleolar line here. From this transmalleolar line, you can measure seven centimeters uh, uh, these are cadaveric images uh, taken with me and my colleague, Mr. Malloy, uh, recorded in America. And from seven millimeters below the fibula, 
is where you'll usually find your sural nerve. The incision is halfway between these two, the fibula and the Achilles. As you see, the sural nerve is at risk. These can be retracted, and retract, retracted uh, both inferior and posterior, as you can see in this diagram. The first pop is the investing fascia. So the investing fascia uh, covers uh, uh, the Achilles and the fibula, uh, the, uh, the sural nerve and the short softness vein is uh, um, above this. So this is moved aside and the investing fascia is first opened. As you can see here, uh, it attracted the uh, sural nerve a finger swipe to get to this uh, investing fascia and this can then be opened. The second pop is the fascia uh, over the FHL and the perineal tendons and it's important, important to do this separately. And the reason for this is that uh, between these two muscle compartments, the perineal artery, on this diagram here you can see this is your FHL, this is your perineal compartment and between it you have your perineal artery. Now this is a immobile artery due to the perforating artery that goes through uh, your uh, interosseous membrane between your fibula and tibia. So it's important not to damage this. So this is incision over the perineal compartment. And it's going to be opened, either put in McDonald's underneath the compartment and open up uh, sharply or uh, done with a knife, as you can see, the FHL compartment has now been opened. And if you see the beef to the heel just coming into view there. And it's a diagrammatic uh, representation of that. Uh, once the uh, flexor lucis longus is retracted um, medially, then it gives you access to the postulateral edge of the tibia, as you can see here. The next pop, so the third pop and final pop is your periosteum, as you can see. This, the periosteum is then retracted. It's important to leave on your uh, deep uh, uh, bands of your posterior and your tibia fibula ligament. So you take a periosteum off from this direction, fold it back, leaving the ligament in place. The fibula is then approached through the sheath. Uh, it's important not to go outside the sheath to prevent uh, um, necrosis to the skin. You can see here, through the sheath, we've then gone through its base. The periosteal elevation can be uh, done to the fibula. Then. Perineal artery is underneath this retracted here. The medial postural medial approach is again three pops. Incision markup this is the posterior edge of the tibia uh, along the line of your posterior uh, tibialis posterior tendon, which is drawn here. Again, we have the investing fascia over the muscle fascial layers. We then have fascia over uh, tibialis posterior. You see the tendons here. So the fascia will be opened like this. Behind this retractor, it's important to note your neurovascular bundle uh, lies. So you see the, the fascia is opened up over your tibialis posterior. And then your tibialis posterior is retracted uh, posteriorly and laterally. The neurovascular bundle is then uh, behind uh, the tendon and being protected. This is a very extensile approach that comes up along the line of your fasciotomy and can go as far up as your uh, proximal tibia. Your third pop is again the periosteum. As you see schematically, this is opened, allowing access to your type 2B fracture. Skin bridge between the postural and medial postural and medial incisions is very large. You also have a neurovascular bundle between them. You see, this is greater than five centimeters. Postural medial approach 
again the three pops. So the incision uh, through a direct lateral on the fibula is shown uh, to uh, show you the skin bridge between these two incisions. And on the medial board of the Achilles from the transmalleolar line, you can make your markup. Through the skin, you then have the investing fascia as previous. And through the schematic, you can see that the neurovas bundle is underneath the next fascial layer. So it's important that you uh, come under the investing fascia and then move underneath the tender Achilles. So you see the skin incision being made. The investing fascia has been opened. In the fascia over FHL, as previous, the postural incision is opened. So you see the finger swipe underneath the tendon Achilles to uh, allow access. And your FHL, uh, with the neurovascular bundle medial to it, is retracted medially. Then your next. Is your periosteum. You can see the posterior aspect of the tibia. Your neurovascular bundle is below your flexilusus longus. The periosteum is opened, so no access to typically a type 3 fracture. Uh, thank you. That's where I'll end.